Hi guys, this is Noah. Noah's going to get an easy maintenance haircut that's perfect for a doodle, a cockapoo, a cavapoo, or any number of these types of mixed breeds, or even purebreds. So let's get busy. I'm going to start by using my Schoenbau Cool Edge Clipper with a three and three quarters blade. We're going to clipper the trunk of the dog's body. Starting about three fingers back off the line of the skull, all the way down to the tail, we're going to give him a short cocker spaniel type tail. Tight. He is about a year old. When he was a puppy, he was a little puppy. He was quite a handful at the very beginning. We did some fear-free work with him, had him come in for special sessions, and really got him acclimated to the grooming process, using toys, freedom of movement, a lot of play, just making the pet grooming salon a happy place. Because this dog is getting a bit shorter of a haircut, we're going to skim a little further down in the legs than I normally do. All the way down the thigh, keeping a little fringe on the front of the leg and taking the back of the leg down all the way to the hock. Skimming a little further down on the front leg, kind of skimming off the elbow here, taking everything off the underside. Good boy. Good boy. Skimming all the way down his big thigh. Taking all the hair off the back of the leg, down to the hock, leaving a little fringe on the front of the leg. Rounding down over the rib cage. Good boy. Next, I am taking a four blade and I am going to come against the grain all the way up the jawline all the way to the mouth, making sure that the dog is keeping his tongue inside his mouth as you do this, because if you're not careful, you could nick the tongue. I want this chin very, very short. This is a very low maintenance haircut. Right? Oh, you're so handsome. You're so handsome. Yes, you are. It's all right. Yes, he's all right, buddy. Now we're going to lift the dog up. And with our four blade, we're going to go against the grain all the way up to the armpits. And that's a good boy. He's <laughs> so cute. All right, back to work. Going to do the pads of the feet with a 40 blade. Good boy.
Okay. Good boy. Next, with our 40 blade, we can take our hand, run it down the ear. Take our 40 blade and take all this hair off the end of the ear. Just that easy. <laughs> you know you gotta get up now. You big flop. You big flop, come on. Yeah, I see your tail wiggling back there. I do. I have all day. Your tail's just going back there. It is, it's just going back there. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's just going back there. Yes, it's just going back there. Yeah. Yeah. It's just going back there. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Good dog. All right. Time to get busy. Come on. Let's go. So we're going to find where the edge of the ear leather is and we're going to trim about a half an inch out off of that. Sometimes I find it's best to work with a dog right where they are rather than trying to make them do something else at least when I don't have to, because that just causes the dog stress. If this is where he's comfortable right now, this is where I'm going to leave him, and I'm just gonna do whatever I can while he's here. So I'm taking off some of this excess hair around the feet. And I'm going to shorten the inside of the legs. By taking off all this hair before the bath, it's a lot less that I have to blow dry. A lot less that I have to brush. And you notice I'm doing all this work with no brushing, no combing. Just knocking the hair off right where it's at. Trying not to disturb his silly self. You're too much, Noah. Too much. All right, with dogs like this, I don't like to bald out between the eyes, but this pet owner does want them quite short in there. I'm gonna use my 7F blade, and I'm going to come in, stretching the skin back on the skull, and just take the corners of the eyes. Again, this 7F blade on a Schoenbau digital clipper is configured much differently than your typical 7F blade, and it is safe, in my opinion, for these applications. Let me comb this hair back, and I'm just going to blend this down. I want to get it as short as I can without balding it. gonna go give him a bath. Maybe that'll wake him up. Maybe. Otherwise we'll be doing the entire haircut with him lying down. Right? Hmm. All right, come on. Oh, let's go. Come on, floppy. 
For Noah's bath, we're going to be using iGroom Prebiotic Shampoo and Conditioner. A proper bath and blow dry is the foundation for a good groom. You need a clean, properly brushed and combed out coat to get the hair to come out evenly. It's very important to apply conditioner. Conditioner helps to maintain a healthy coat and skin. It makes the hair easier to brush out, easier to comb, less static, Squeeze off all water off the dog. And wrap the dog up in a nice warm towel. Or two, depending on the size of the dog. And off to the drying table going to use for the blow dry are a Schoenbau wall mount dryer. I do not use high velocity dryers. A Artero universal slicker, an Artero long pin slicker, a Chris Christensen butter comb number 004, and a Diane comb for the face. All right, let's get busy. Let's get busy, buddy boys. Yeah, we're gonna get blow dry. Yes, we are. We're gonna get blow dry. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. A boy, a boy, a boy. <laughs> it's okay to make the table fun. It doesn't have to be all work. When it's work time, we'll tell them it's work time. But if we're in between work, we can just play, play, play. Play, play, play. Play, play, play. play. Yes, you can. Because it's got to be fun. It's got to be fun for the puppies. All right, here we go. to mist the coat all over with our Taro Mix Spray. Brush the coat against the grain. He has a thick mixed texture coat. Thicker coats I do tend to brush against the grain as long as they're not coarse and have an outer coat of coarse guard hairs. Soft, thick hair of a mixed texture. I do brush against the grain. I'm going to clip from three fingers below the skull all the way down to 
just in front of the tail, leaving a little fill of hair right here at the top of the tail so that there's no dip between the back and the tail. Skimming down the bigger thigh, rounding under the rib cage. Lifting up the ear, clipping under the ear, all the way down the shoulder, skimming off the shoulder down into the thicker hair on the legs. Because he is getting a short haircut, I'm going to go from the elbow to the pastern with my clipper. I'm going to clip her on either side of the tail with my three and three quarter blade, leaving the fill of hair in front here. Skimming down the shoulder, down into the longer hair on the front leg, clipping down the entire front of the dog, all the way up under the chest, rounding down around the rib cage. against the grain on the underside. Clipping down the big thigh, down the back of the leg, skimming off this hair on the front of the leg. Now I'm going to brush it all up again and do it all over again. By brushing it up, it'll lift up and out any hair that I missed and give me a more plush, even haircut. Set the legs up under the dog a bit. Clip from the elbow to the pastern with the blade. Lift up the leg, clip the opposite side leg all the way down to the table, both front and rear. Good dog. So when I clippered the belly with the seven blade, I did notice him go right around to lick it. That indicates to me that he is hypersensitive in those areas, which means that when I go to go under his tail, I am going to use a 5F blade because I have already been given a warning that he is sensitive. So with a very light touch, I'm going to clean up around the anus. I don't want it balded here, just trimmed. I'm going to come up the back of the tail. Yes, I love you too. Yes, I love you too. We're going to brush the hair down on the feet, pulling a bit of the hair up through the toes, and using the Artero Fusion Curvy Shears. I'm going to trim off anything that falls down below the pads. Being careful not to nick the pads of the feet with the scissors. Good bowing. Using the palm of my hand to push the foot backwards helps to push that hair down in the place where I need it. We'll repeat this on all four feet. Going to brush the hair down around the feet and around the feet. 
because this is a short haircut, I am taking the feet quite tight. Turn. I'm going to mist the dog over with Artero Mix conditioner and comb the hair up and out. To prepare it for scissoring. I see a little mat under his arm here. I'm going to use a tin blade and get that out. Now I'm going to scissor the legs short using Zolita Mirage Shears, eight and a half inch. Remember I did the back of the front legs with a clipper, so they are already very short. I also did the inside of the legs with the clipper. I did not do the entire leg with the clipper though, because I want to still keep the legs in this nice pillar shape. And you can do that even when clipping them very short by leaving a fill of hair on the front of the leg and between the pastern and the floor on the back of the leg. That way your legs can be really, really short without looking super skinny. A nice tight haircut, yet it still has a little bit of style. The same on the back legs. I left hair in key areas while clipping the rest with a clipper. I clipped the entire thigh with a clipper, all the way back down the back of the leg with a clipper, and the inside of the leg with the clipper, and left a little bit of hair on the front of the leg, and right in here, and on the hock, which gives the back leg a fuller look and a little bit of style while still being very, very short. You want to have dogs that your clients are proud to walk down the street if you're a professional groomer. Mist over this side, comb the hair up and out. And scissor. So anybody can learn to scissor a dog. It just takes practice, guys. 
And the best way to practice is just to begin somewhere. And the best place to practice on on your dog is the legs. So by clipping the body with a blade, just practice scissoring these legs. It's the easiest thing to do. It's actually easier to scissor legs than it is to clipper them and faster. And the reason why it's easier to scissor legs rather than to clipper them is dogs don't like their legs being held onto. So when you're scissoring a dog's legs, you can leave their legs on the floor or on the table. But when you are clipping a dog's legs, you have to pick up and hold that leg to do it. That sets the dog up in a pattern of not cooperating. And you'll be tired, huh? Yeah. So many people think it's easier to shave a dog. I completely disagree. That's a good boy. All right, we're gonna work on the face now. So there's a couple of things I wanna accomplish with this face. The pet parent wants it really short. I want it to still be cute. And I want it to be easy to maintain. I'm going to do the top of the head with my V3 Masuta Curved Chunkers, 22 teeth. Taking the head quite short. Good boy. I don't want any appearance of him looking like a poodle. So I'm taking this head quite flat and I want to blend it back off the eyes, not having a bang. So I'm using my Zolita Yankee Doodle chunkers. These are curved and skimming back off the eyes. Combing it forward and skimming it back. not cutting in over the ears. Good boy. He does not have the kind of hair that I can really put curl back into. It's quite straight up there. Many times with these doodle looks, I will put curl back in them, but not all dogs coats retain curl. Now this mustache, I had shaved the chin with the four blade and I want to take a very short mustache. So I'm rounding this up with my curved chunkers. It's very thick hair. Good boy. Before I finish the face, I want to take more off on the ears. So I'm going to pull the ear forward, comb it up and out, and being very careful of where the edges of the ears are, I'm going to take my curved chunkers and blend these ears up. Because I want him to look more like a puppy in the face and to keep a puppy look we really need a layered shorter ear he 
He's nibbling on my fingers. What are you doing to me? What are you doing to me, sweet boy? Do the same with this ear. I'm going to pull it forward. Comb it up. And again, being fully aware where the edges of these ears are. I'm going to thin it up. Finding right where the edge of the ear is, I want to shorten this up just a bit so they match. Come here. All right, tilt the head up and comb this down. This is her underneath. Tilt the nose down, comb this hair forward, and scissor it so nothing falls past the nose. And using my curved chunkers, I'm going to round this up to give him a nice short face, a cute puppy look. So he has a pretty serious problem going on with his ears. So he'll have to have that tended by the vet. A huge mistake a lot of pet groomers make is attempting to get that rock hard black goo out of the dog's ears. They want to do the dog a favor by cleaning it out they want to prepare the ear for the vet. They want to help the dog feel better. But honestly, guys, it does not help the dog to feel better to disturb that. It causes the dog major head shaking, ear scratching, and discomfort while they're waiting to go to the vet. And these days, if they can't get into the vet right away, they may have a little bit of a wait. So, I leave that intact. Number one, so the veterinarian will have something to test. Number two, so the dog is not being caused discomfort. And number three, because it's going out of my lane as a pet groomer. It is not my job to treat the ears. It is not my job to make the ears feel better. That is the veterinarian's job and the pet owner's job. I'm a pet groomer. I'm not a veterinarian. I'm not a vet tech. I do not work at an animal hospital. So I personally would do more harm than good by touching it. And that's why I don't. I think a lot of pet groomers are taught to clean ears and if they send a dog home with dirty ears they feel like they're doing a bad job and I think that that mentality is 
something that needs to be retrained. And I think in pet grooming schools, pet groomers need to be taught to leave abnormal ears completely alone. And that's not dirt. That is an abnormal ear. Just because it's black doesn't mean it's dirt. Just because it's cruddy doesn't mean it's dirt. And I do not pluck ears in my salon either. And I won't even clip her out this ear. Like if it were healthy, I would clip out all that from the base of the ear. But because it's not healthy, I'm not going to because I will only cause the dog discomfort and head shaking and potential injury. So what do I mean by potential injury? If the dog starts to shake its head excessively, it could cause itself a hematoma meaning the skin will separate in the ear leather and fill up with blood. And then it could possibly need to be surgically lanced to release the blood. Or the dog could scratch at the ears excessively and break the skin. And within a day or two, the skin could actually be bloody and scabby. So those are injuries that could be caused by cleaning the ear without the proper medication being right there to follow up. And if you're a pet owner and you notice something like that in your dog's ear, don't treat it with something that you've got left over from a previous ear infection. Don't clean it yourself while waiting on going to the vet. Have the ear medication in hand. Have the vet check the ear first. Do a cytology on it. Know exactly what you're dealing with, whether it's yeast or bacteria, what kind of bacteria. You know, putting other things in the ears when you're not sure exactly what you're dealing with can cause major harm to your dog. Using an ear wash in an abnormal ear can cause major uh, issues for your dog. All right, this little man's almost done. Nothing is, he's almost done. <laughs> All right. He's a good boy. We're going to brush him all over, trying to lift up any little bits of hair that we've missed with the clipping and scissoring. I'm gonna go completely over his scissor work again. It's important to remember on the red and brown doodle types that they're going to have hypersensitive skin, hypersensitive ears. They're not going to handle well being clipped under the tail, the belly, and under the ears. They're going to do a lot of head shaking if you clip under the ears, and they're going to sit down and act like something's bothering them on their back end if you clip them too close around under the tail. If you have one that is not hypersensitive, that dog would be the odd dog out. So this is a cute, easy maintenance haircut for a cockapoo, a cavapoo, a mini doodle, a bigger doodle. It's just a really cute, easy haircut. It's really nice if the dog goes swimming, if the dog goes to the dog park and plays outside a lot. 
If you're a busy family with children, keeps the face nice and dry, keeps the ears nice and short, very little brushing. It's really a nice haircut. Noah is all ready to go home. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a single upload. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye.